So I've been thinking and reflecting and I'm sure you've heard this saying, hurt people, hurt people. That's what I was thinking about. I was thinking about, okay, the people who have hurt me, somebody hurt them, that's why they hurt me. And that's why I have hurt others, right? But at the same time, I started learning about trauma responses. And to elaborate on that idea of hurt people hurt people, I found that everybody is operating in trauma and that's what's hurting other people. There are four trauma responses. There is flight, freeze, fawn, and fight. Each of these have particular characteristics and when you break them down and look at them on a deeper level, you will realize when people are acting toxic, it's from a place of trying to prevent that trauma from ever happening again. And so us as the outsider will view that person as toxic and they view themselves as I'm protecting myself from being hurt again. So in this video, I'd like to teach you about the different trauma responses so that you can recognize and understand why you too are toxic and so am I. Because when you've been traumatized, you will do anything and everything in your power to prevent yourself from being hurt again. And sometimes that includes whether or not it hurts other people. Hence, we are hurt people hurting other people. I'm going to start with the first most common and most obvious trauma response, which is to fight. The people who fight back, the people who become aggressive, domineering and control freaks after they've experienced trauma. These are the people who are described as type A, bullies, explosive, controlling. They are attackers. They dominate people. These are the people who are great at being toxic bosses, managers. They are assertive, they know how to set boundaries, they are determined, they are good for leadership positions, and they are articulate. And that's because in the past, someone probably shut them down and insulted their work, their work ethic, the way they did something, and so they never want to be in a position where they do anything wrong again. So this is why these are the people who will micromanage their employees and subordinates, and we will view them as a toxic boss but they're just protecting themselves from whoever either their inner critic their caregiver or whoever in their life has insulted the way they do things before unfortunately they believe that being dominating having power and control over people makes them safe they think obsessively and they are really afraid of abandonment in order to survive they pursue power and control, which is why they are great CEOs. As I've said, they are those ruthless people who you think are heartless. But in fact, the truth is they are operating from a place of pain. They were either a spoiled child or they were allowed and able to imitate their narcissistic parent. They are super criticizing and they are full of rage. They tell themselves they need to control and correct other people who are imperfect and therefore they are mislabeled as being narcissists or psychopaths. They don't really have relationships, they just have prisoners. Let's move on to the people pleaser, also known as fawn response. These are the people who do their best to be in the good books with whoever has traumatized them because that's what they believe will keep them safe from being re-traumatized. These are the people who are slaves doormats, people pleasers. They have no sense of self because their abuser decides who they get to be in the world. They are super peacemakers. They always want to be amicable. They hate conflict. They are the nice guy. They are super concerned with fitting in. They flatter other people. They are the entertainer. Yes ma'am, yes sir person. They, their core belief is that they are imperfect and they have to please other people. They sacrifice their needs, their rights, their boundaries and their preferences just to remain in relationship with people whether those relationships are good or bad for them. They want to be helpful. They want to be of service. They are probably the child of a narcissistic parent who learned that if you want to be loved, you have to do things for people. And then we look at them and say they are toxic because they are codependent 
and they are the victim parentified child. This person disconnects from themselves in order to connect with others and conform to the wishes of other people. If you have been traumatized and you will know that your trauma response is freeze, we will view you as cold. We will view you as a snob because you don't want to be around other people because your core belief is other people are not safe. In the past, you have been hurt by others and you will do anything that you can to prevent that from happening again. And so you isolate yourself, you hide, you camouflage, you are a couch potato, a hermit, you are disassociative. Your core belief is that people are synonymous to danger. And so to survive, you avoid human contact. You are probably addicted to series, you love video games, maybe you sleep a lot and you love being online, maybe on social media, or just online browsing. Your mantra is to avoid other people who are imperfect because imperfect people hurt you. Your childhood. You were probably the scapegoat in your family, the most profoundly abandoned child. You have employed freeze trauma response because you're not really allowed to fawn. You can't fight and you definitely cannot flight. So moving on to flight response. If your trauma response type is flight, you are a perfectionist. You are always rushing. You are panicky. You are worrying. You are always busy, always doing something, always chasing the next big thing because your worth is in what you do and what you can achieve because your trauma was that someone bashed you and your achievements and nothing was ever good enough. So you are the overachiever at school and at work. You are always climbing the ladder and you do it successfully. You are labeled by the rest of us as OCD, bipolar, maybe you also have ADHD. You believe that being perfect and achieving big things makes you lovable. In childhood, you are the one who was hypersensitive to any family trauma. Sometimes you were the A student, sometimes you were the student with learning difficulties. Your inner critic is always telling you, I have to be perfect, I have to be perfect, I have to do perfect. I have to do perfect and whatever is not perfect is not good enough. Here are the things that you can do in order to heal and stop responding to the world with your trauma type and your trauma response in order for the rest of us to stop viewing each other as toxic and to stop the cycle of hurt people hurt people. I also hope that the following information will give you compassion and understanding for anyone that you have seen acting out the trauma responses that I have just described. Now here's how you heal. If your trauma response is fight, allow yourself to grieve. Give yourself the time and release the energy of all the hurt and the pain of your past rather than lashing out at other people. Shrink your outer critic that tells other people that they need to be perfect in order for you to accept and value them. You need to understand that your obsessiveness with power will also cost you relationships with people. You can start taking self-initiated timeouts when you feel the rage building up. Remove yourself from the situation rather than expressing what you feel and lashing out at other people. You can also learn a lot from someone who has adapted the fawn trauma response. Maybe you can find a balance between your need to control and the fawn's positive attribute of having empathy for other people. If your trauma response is fawn, you need to understand that you are losing yourself if you don't have boundaries. Your needs will never be met and you will always be unhappy and disappointed in yourself. Redirect your people-pleasing tendencies to self-compassion. Give yourself time to grieve your childhood and the fact that you couldn't express your individual needs and your individual characteristic, but you are able to now. Shrink your inner critic that tells you that being assertive, knowing what you want, expressing your opinion and having needs is wrong, bad, or frowned upon. Learn how to deal with and handle your fear of abandonment. Most of all, learn to accept 
disapproval. Start showing up as your true authentic self. We will love you for who you really are. If your trauma response is freeze, you need to understand the cost of isolation. Redirect your social anxiety to self-compassion. Give yourself time to grieve about your helplessness in childhood. You are no longer a child, you are an adult now and you can create the life that you want. Shrink your outer critic that tells you repeatedly that other people are imperfect and they are definitely going to hurt you not everybody is going to hurt you learn coping skills for disassociation and you can refer to suzette boone's book start your healing journey by connecting with friends support groups and pets if your trauma response is flight understand the cost of perfectionism causing self-abandonment redirect your over analytical thinking shrink your inner critic that demands perfection from yourself develop mindfulness so that you can reduce your anxiety reduce your need to perform in order to be loved also think about what hurt you are trying to escape from by being so great and so perfect in whatever you are doing thank you so much for watching this video i hope that it gives you insight and understanding as to why hurt people hurt people and also why people with different trauma responses will clash imagine if you have two people from the same family one has adopted fight one has adopted flight one believes they are imperfect, the other believes everybody else is imperfect. It's a mess. So please go into the world understanding and knowing that we are all operating from our trauma responses. In addition, they overlap. Today you could be fawning, tomorrow you could be disassociative, but you are one person. I hope it will help you to understand why if you are in the same family and you have different trauma responses, this can lead to extra, extra conflict. Can you imagine one sibling developing fawn response and one sibling developing freeze response? How will the two ever come together when one is appeasing the abuser and one is disassociating from the entire family unit? Or your manager could go into phone response for the person higher than they are but for you they expect perfection from you being a human is so complicated <laughs> but let's do it all together <laughs> thank you so much for watching lots of love